And Rwanda has carried out the public flight of a self-flying electric car taxi in the country. Imagine stepping outside in Kigali, Rwanda, coffee in hand, expecting birds overhead. And instead, you see a car flying across the skyline. Nope, not a Marvel movie. Not CGI. Real life. Rwanda just became the first African nation to launch a flying car, and the whole world is buzzing. Everyone's talking, except Elon Musk. The guy who usually tweets more than a parrot on espresso is suddenly silent. Strange, right? This wasn't some scrappy prototype wobbling around like a paper drone either. We're talking about the Ehang EH216S, an electric, self-flying, two-seat air taxi that rose gracefully 100 meters into the air in front of a global audience at the Africa Aviation Summit. While other countries are still fixing potholes, Rwanda basically said, forget roads, we'll take the sky. So how does a small landlocked nation beat Silicon Valley at its own game? Simple strategy. Rwanda partnered with China Road and Bridge Corporation and Ehang, one of the biggest names in urban air mobility. That's like skipping the group project and hiring NASA to do your homework. Kagame didn't just buy a flying car. He built an entire ecosystem for advanced air mobility, urban congestion killer, carbon emissions slayer, tourism magnet. Rwanda didn't walk into the future. It flew in. And here's the genius. This isn't Rwanda's first rodeo. Remember when they rolled out zipline drones to deliver blood supplies years ago? That was just the beta test. Now they've leveled up. Imagine tourists soaring above green hills instead of grinding through traffic, or executives skipping gridlock like they unlocked cheat codes. This is Rwanda's pitch to become the Dubai of Africa's skies. Bold? Yes. Brilliant? Absolutely. But wait, there's drama. Because if you rewind a few years, Kenya loudly announced they'd have flying taxis by 2025. Big press conferences, big promises. Well, 2025 is here, and Kenya's still stuck honking in Nairobi traffic. Meanwhile, Kagame just snatched the first in Africa crown and flew off laughing. This isn't just aviation, it's regional one-upmanship with propellers. And while Kagame is busy stealing headlines, guess who's gone radio silent? Elon Musk. The man who casually tweets about colonizing Mars is suddenly speechless about Africa taking to the skies. Is he stunned? Is he plotting? Or is this one of those let-me-just-watch-and-see billionaire moves? Either way, Rwanda has flipped the narrative. The world thought the race was between America and China. But Kigali just cut the line and shouted, Surprise! We're in the game too! And that's what makes this moment so electric. It's not just about a flying taxi. It's about rewriting Africa's role in tech history. Rwanda isn't waiting to be a customer of innovation anymore. It's becoming a producer of it. So let's talk about Elon Musk's silence, because honestly, it's louder than any tweet he could have fired off. Normally, this is the guy who comments on everything. Dogecoin, he's on it. Uh, I, he's warning us about the robot apocalypse. Someone sneezes in Silicon Valley. Elon's got a hot take. But when Rwanda suddenly leapfrogs into the flying car race? Crickets. Nothing. Not even a meme. And that silence is suspicious. Musk has built his entire brand around being the prophet of futuristic transport. Electric cars, reusable rockets, tunnels under cities, colonizing Mars. He's the man who never misses a chance to say, I told you, the future was mine. So why is he suddenly playing mute while Kagame is upstaging him on the world stage? Here's one theory. Rwanda's move wasn't in the script. For years, the flying car conversation has been dominated by the US and China. In the West, you've got Tesla's dreams and Bay Area startups like Aleph building vertical takeoff cars. In the East, you've got Xi Jinping backing a hang, and pouring billions into urban air mobility. Everyone assumed the big dogs would battle it out while the rest of the world just waited to buy tickets. But then Rwanda kicks down the door like, 
Actually, we'll be taking the future too. Thank you very much. And that changes everything. Because if a small African nation can pull this off, what's stopping others? Suddenly, the monopoly of innovation isn't just West versus East. It's global. And Musk, the man who thrives on being first, might just be caught flat-footed. Meanwhile, the global reaction, let's just say, jaws hit the floor. China's watching closely. Because remember, Yi Hang is their baby. This wasn't just Rwanda flexing. It was Beijing quietly saying, see, our tech works anywhere, even in Africa. For China, this is a power move. It strengthens ties, opens up markets, and builds influence across a continent the West often underestimates. The US, on the other hand, is probably sipping coffee and thinking, wait, what just happened? For decades, Africa was painted as a tech follower, not a leader. Now Kagame just flipped that script in front of the world's cameras, and you can bet policymakers, investors, and yes, even Tesla's boardrooms are scrambling to figure out how they missed the memo. But Kagame wasn't just showing off cool hardware. No, this was a statement. Rwanda doesn't want to be a side character in the global tech story anymore. It wants a starring role. From drone blood deliveries to flying cars, it's proving Africa isn't just catching up. It's rewriting the race entirely. And that's what stings for Elon. He's used to being the disruptor, the man who shocks the market, who breaks the rules, who makes world leaders look slow. But this time, it wasn't Musk. It was Kagame. And the silence? Maybe it's not arrogance. Maybe it's the sound of someone realizing they've just been outmaneuvered. But don't get too comfortable, because Kagame didn't stop at technology. Nope. While the world was still gasping at Rwanda's flying car, he pulled out another card. And this one has global politics written all over it. Just when you thought the flying car was enough to steal the headlines, Kagame decided, nah, let's drop a plot twist. While Rwanda was basking in the glory of Africa's first flying taxi, Kagame announced something else. Rwanda is opening its borders, visa-free, to all African nations. Yup, Africans first. No forms, no hoops, no bureaucratic marathon at the airport. Meanwhile, certain Western nations, they're getting tighter restrictions. Talk about flipping the script on global power dynamics. It's genius, really. On one hand, Kagame is showcasing futuristic tech, telling the world, we're not just keeping up, we're setting the pace. On the other, he's strengthening Pan-African unity and sending a crystal clear message. Africa doesn't need permission slips from the West to shape its future. It's like he pressed export on innovation and import on solidarity, all in the same speech. And here's why that matters. For decades, the story of African innovation was always framed in dependency, waiting for Western aid, adopting Asian tech, or catching up to trends years late. But this, this was different. Rwanda didn't just showcase a flying car, it showcased independence, ambition, and leadership. That little air taxi wasn't just flying. It was carrying Africa's reputation to a new altitude. Think about the ripple effects. Tourism, supercharged, investors, suddenly curious, young African engineers and entrepreneurs, inspired. Kagame basically handed the next generation a front row seat to the future and said, why not you? The symbolism here is massive. This wasn't just a demonstration of hardware. It was proof that Africa can dream, build, and deliver. And let's not forget the regional spice. Kenya once bragged about launching flying taxis by 2025. Spoiler, they didn't. Rwanda beat them to it. Now Kenya's big talk looks like a punchline, while Kigali is sipping champagne at the winner's table. This isn't just innovation, it's competition, African style. Every country now knows the bar has been raised. Rwanda's saying, if we can do it, you better step up. Of course, the world is watching closely. For China, this launch is validation. Their tech isn't just flying in Shanghai, it's flying in Kigali. 
That's a diplomatic win, an engineering win, and a market-opening move all rolled into one. For the US and Europe, it's a wake-up call. Africa isn't just a customer anymore, it's a competitor. And for Elon Musk, well, the silence is deafening. Imagine being the guy known for bold visions, the guy who wants to put humanity on Mars, and suddenly a small African country just leapfrogs you in the flying car race. If you were Elon, what would you even say? Congrats, Kigali, but my Tesla can parallel park by itself. Yeah, that doesn't exactly compete with a car that can literally fly. But the real kicker is this. Kagami didn't frame Rwanda's achievement as a solo act. He framed it as a continental milestone, Africa rising together. Rwanda may have launched the first flying car, but the message is bigger. The future doesn't belong to just the US or China. Africa is claiming its seat at the table, and not as a guest, more like a co-host. And here's the thing about tectonic shifts. Once they start, they don't stop. Which means the question now isn't, can Africa do it? It's, who's next? Here's the bigger picture. Rwanda's flying car launch isn't just about tech or Kagame flexing or Elon Musk sitting in awkward silence. It's about something deeper, Africa's future. For too long, the continent has been cast as the backdrop to everyone else's innovation story. The place where Silicon Valley dumps gadgets after they've already gone out of style or where Beijing invests to flex influence. But this launch, it flips the narrative. Africa isn't a passive consumer anymore. It's a creator, a pioneer, a disruptor. Think of it like this. When you see a flying car over Kigali, you're not just seeing engineering. You're seeing symbolism. You're seeing a continent that's tired of waiting for permission. Rwanda is basically holding up a neon sign that says, we're not the future of technology, we're the present. And if that doesn't get your attention, you're probably still stuck in traffic somewhere wishing your Uber could sprout wings. The timing couldn't be better either. Africa's population is exploding, its cities are expanding, and the demand for smarter, greener, faster mobility is skyrocketing. Traditional infrastructure, too slow, too messy, flying cars, they skip all that. Rwanda is betting big that by adopting early, it can leapfrog decades of headaches and plant itself right at the forefront of the next global industry. And that's why this matters far beyond Rwanda. What happens when Lagos decides to launch its own fleet, or Johannesburg, or Cairo? Suddenly, Africa isn't trailing behind. It's setting the standard. Investors who once saw the continent as risky will realize the risk isn't Africa. It's ignoring Africa. Meanwhile, the West has to play catch-up. Elon Musk might be the king of rockets and Teslas, but if Africa starts leading in the skies of tomorrow, even he's going to need to rethink his roadmap. Musk's silence might just be the sound of someone recalculating. Because once Africa proves it can innovate at this level, the old stereotypes crumble. Permanently. But here's the best part. This isn't just a victory lap for Kagame or for Rwanda. It's an invitation. An invitation for Africa's youth, its engineers, its dreamers. It's proof that bold leadership, smart partnerships, and guts can rewrite the rulebook. The same way Silicon Valley rewrote the future from garages in California, Kigali just showed it can be done from the heart of Africa. So, what now? That's the million-dollar question. Does Rwanda's flying car launch spark a domino effect across the continent? Will Elon Musk finally break his silence? And most importantly, will the world finally realize Africa isn't just along for the ride? It's in the driver's seat, or in this case, the pilot's seat. And if you're watching this right now, you're part of that shift. Because the more we amplify these stories, the harder it becomes for anyone to dismiss Africa as an afterthought. So here's my challenge. Don't just sit there waiting for the future to happen. Be part of it. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Do you think Rwanda just rewrote Africa's tech destiny? 
Could this spark the next big innovation wave across the continent? If you're as fired up about this as I am, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and join this community. Because trust me, this is only the beginning. Rwanda's flying car isn't just a headline. It's a warning shot to the world. Africa is rising. The skies are no longer the limit.